So uh, before before uh, Monterey, you were um, probably best known as a cinematographer, um, and uh, but in Monterey, you you uh, and you still work as a cinematographer, of course. And um, but on Monterey, you, you worked with a, another cinematographer. So I was um, I was hoping you could talk about um, the about your collaboration um, and how. And what it was like working with someone else to arrive at the uh, the visual idea for your own film. Well, uh, firstly, thanks all of you for being patient until the end of the film. I really appreciated it for the Friday night. Yeah, I've been working as a cinematographer for many years, and this time I got the chance to work as a director. And this DOP of of Mandarin, he used to be my assistant and worked with me for eight or nine years already. Yes. Um, and uh, of course, um, the the political dimension of the film seems um, quite important. Uh, it's announced at the beginning of the film and in, in the dedication um, uh, for the Rohingyas and one of the. Um, one of the main characters is also uh, Rohingya, and um, could you talk a bit about um, what the, uh, I guess, what the political dimension of the film uh, means for you? Well, I think that the, the refugee crisis is not only happened in, in Thailand, and it's happened all over the world. It's a world crisis, and in the de dedication of of. The, uh, in the beginning of the film, I put the dedication of the Rohingya, and to my idea, I just want—I really wanted to to delete that, but my producer forced me to 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 leave it there. I have a que one question: If I put the dedication to the Albanian, to the Syrian, that this film still convey the same message or not? Yes, I ask my my producer, but at the end, I, I have to put the Rohingya. And um, of course, uh, there there isn't dialogue in, in in long stretches of of the film, and you do very I think you do very interesting work with silence, using using silence as a as a plastic or like a sculptural element. Could you um, could you talk a bit about the about the sound design of the film and maybe um, how you conceptualized these um, the the how silence would function in the film. Well, as I told you that I've been working as a cinematographer for many years, and and for this my first film, I want to ex expand it my my study in filmmaking into the the, the sound. I can really pay attention to the sound and and mentally I work with the French composer and sound designer. Well, I finished the first cut of the film. Without uh, any music reference, I just sent that the first cut to to France, and and somehow the composer just 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 composed by their own randomly into the film, and 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 yes, I just pick up some of the sound and still remain in the final cut of the film. Yes. And um, the film has a sort of a, a somewhat bifurcated structure, uh, but it's it's kind of organic. Um, uh, and I was wondering if you could talk a bit about how you arrive at the structure of the film. And I think this is related. I was I was curious about the editing uh, process, and of co uh, of course it you know it seems notable that you you share an editor with a, a, a filmmaker who uh, our audience knows quite well a pichapong virasophical um so could you talk a bit about the structure of the film and and the editing process well i have to say i am i'm very bad the script writer the final of the script was just 30 pages and it it was very realistic film it's a story of two men, the relationship of two men, and one gone, the wife returned. That's, that kind of narrative lie was written in the script. But I have another world with, with this 
not written in the script. The, the world of the fantasy forest, something underneath the ground, and some huge animal in the sea, and some gemstone blinking light in the forest. And I want to connect the two worlds together during the film uh, production. During on the set, that doesn't mean it's a lot of improvisation on this film, and also the the sound process. I mean the, the post production sound process. I send the kind of very organic of the sound to the to France, and I got very strange sound return. I I can say to you this kind of is uncommon sound to the. Thai cinema is kind of, I don't know how to say it's strength, but I accept that. Yeah. Um, and I'll just ask one more question, and then we can, um, we can turn it over to the audience. Um, I think the, the cast of the film is a mixture of professional and non-professional actors. Um, um, could you talk about, uh, about casting uh, uh, the film and um, and uh, how, what your collaboration was like with the, the three sort of uh, core uh, uh, actors in, in the film? Uh, I can say they are non-professional. Even the main character, he played uh, in the, some type film before, but considering that he's not a professional at all. And for the, 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 the milk guy, the Lohingya, the stranger, I open call through the Facebook, just open call and 50 of the, of the actor just came for the audition and I just picked him because he told me one story is very interesting. He, he said he, he came from the southern part of Thailand where we have a conflict between the Buddhist and Muslim. Even he lived in Bangkok for 10 years, and he feel he, he, he is a stranger of, of, of the city. And yes, it's maybe good for my character. And the, the last one, Sai Jai, who sing the song, I chose her because of YouTube. I, I found her on YouTube, and, and he sing really She's well. She's a pop singer, yes? She, she is, yes. Um, all right, so we can take some questions from the audience. If you have, if you have a question, just raise your hand and we'll bring you a microphone. So, Someone? Anyone? <laughs> I'm taking it back. Yeah, okay. I, I, did you put your hand down? No, I uh, oh, okay. Yeah, if you have a question, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I, I was curious if there were symbols or things that a, a Thai audience would get that we wouldn't necessarily get. Um, and it's fine if you want everything to be mysterious, but for example, the, the military ship, maybe that to a Thai audience would mean something very specific, I don't know, or, or the lights in the forest. It sounds like you're saying that was part of a concept of a magical forest, but I wondered if that would mean something different to a Thai audience that you could talk about? I don't think so. I feel the Thai audience will feel the same way that you, 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 you have now. The battleship, abandoned battleship. You know what, I, I'm sorry, I'm so tired. <laughs> I, a lot of jet lag. The, the battleship, during the filming in one small village, and I just saw it, the abandoned battleship, and I, I tried to ask the permission. It, that is, wasn't in the script at all. I just wanted to, to, to shoot in, in, in the script, and I shared the dialogue that the Sai Jai just uh, has a new boyfriend, is a Navy soldier, like that. I shared the dialogue because of that battleship. And it's not, no meaning, no, nothing behind that at all. Even the blinking light. But I, I love the David Lynch 
Once I, I watched the David Lynch film, Eraserhead, I, 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 maybe I feel the same way that you watched this one, Cross Culture. Pudifang, hello, how are you? Um, how long did this take from the time you first thought of it to, to it was done? Uh, what was the whole, how, what was the length of the whole thing, process? Hello, Patrick, uh, I remember nice you. <laughs> Well, I started project in 2009. Yeah. Okay. It takes how many years? Eight years because of financial financial support. I am I, I've been seeking for the money many years. Yes, but okay. the project started in 2009. Okay. Well, it's it's very it's very very good. I like it. It's very compelling, and uh, I'm glad you stuck with it. Thank you. Do we have any other? Right. Right. Can we get her a microphone right here? Thank you. It was a beautiful film. Um, is the region Ranong? Am I pronouncing it right? Because um, it was just very mysterious and um, a beautiful area, I found. So it. it where is that in Thailand? In the, obviously on the sea, but w which area is it in Thailand? North? It, it is north? It, it, in the south. In the south, okay. Thank you, it was beautiful, thank you. Yes, in the landscape of my film, if you see the sea, and behind the sea, another bank is the mountain, that is the Myanmar. We shot the film at the border, the marine town. The yes. Hi. Um, you said that you started your project at 2009. Um, I was just curious as to what the process and struggles of trying to get this film into fruition and um, how you actually managed to make it what it is now. I, mean, it's a, I would say it's a nine-year project, and I'm just curious as to how you did that. In 2009, I, I made one short uh, treatment, five pages, and I applied for the one funding in, in South Korea. It's called Busan, Asian Cinema Fund, and I received that in 2010. And then I, I have some amount of money, enough for, for, for doing my research. What I did is I traveled along the borderline of Thailand. And that it, I spent the money development, script development money for traveling. And, and in 2011, I participated in, in two, I can say, workshop in France. It's called Prodeo Suit. And another one in Hong Kong, Hong Kong Asian Film Financial Forum, something like that. And yeah, and then I tried to find the money for many years, but never happened. Until 2015, my Thai producer started to contact the French producer, whom I I, I joined the, the workshop in 2011, and that producer helped me out. That. He applied for one, fund, one funding in, in France, kind of big enough to make the feature film. It's called Cinema du Monde, CNC. And finally, I, I received that. That's why I can start to, to make this film. We have time for one more question. Yeah. Okay, great. Hi, thank you for an incredibly beautiful film. I'm just curious. The concept of silence, was that always there or did it just develop as you were putting your film together, so to speak? The silence of the character or the silence of the film? Sorry, there is a lot of silence. There's, art, there's snatches of dialogue. So that's kind of taking a risk in a way, I think, to say, well, is the audience going to stay with me? Um, so my question is, when did you determine that you were going to have deliberate silence 
for long, long stretches. As I told you that I'm, I'm a bad script writer, I don't know how to, to, to write a good dialogue. That is my, the first one. The second is uh, the character who is mute. Once I make this character mute, I've been asked by the audience why this guy mute. And yes, maybe this time that, that we can get, I, how can I say, now that the people, the audience get the attention why this guy mute, and maybe you, you start want to listen, and he is the refugee. I don't know, it's maybe confusing great answer. <laughs> um, that's all we have time for. Uh, but thank you for your film, and thank you for being here, and thank all of you for being thank here too. You. Thank you very much.